Time for another Fixing Faulty eBay junk video and this time I've not got myself a controller or a console like usual but it is still gaming related although it's maybe not something I have any experience with when it comes to repairing it's this thing here it's a Sony PlayStation 3D display these were released around 2012 by Sony obviously and I think they were marketed as sort of a a budget entry point into the, the 3D gaming market although these weren't very cheap to begin with I think in the US they retail for around $600 it's a 24 inch display if you're wondering um, in the UK they sold for £450 so definitely not a, a cheap item to have um, and I'll get into some of its features in a moment but I'll just show you how much I paid for this one so I paid £31 and £15 postage so £31 if you're wondering is around 50 US dollars uh, so £46 in total if you include the shipping that's around 75 US dollars uh, just to give you an idea so I'm really happy to get this for that price it is faulty of course but I have a, a good idea of what might be wrong with it and I'm hoping it's quite a straightforward fix if I can get this working for that price that would be that would be really really good but I'll show you what is included with it and just scroll down here and if you look here it says you get the stand, the power supply, you get two 3D glasses with it and he's also thrown in the remote which he didn't originally get included with it and the copy of Killzone 3 and he's already emailed me to say that he couldn't find the copy of Killzone 3 but he's thrown in, I think he said Gran Turismo or something instead so to be honest I'm really not bothered, I'm more interested to see if I can get this thing up and running again but from the small amount of research that I've done so far it seems to me that all of these um, displays had a, a manufacturing defect and it seems like Sony have been or were using um, some poor quality EEPROMs what ends up happening is they get corrupted and then the TV won't switch on which is basically the same fault that this one is uh, described as having. If you look here you can see the blue light comes on in the front uh, and this, but the screen doesn't actually come on itself and this kind of goes along with everything I've been reading online so I'm hoping and it, I could be totally wrong and it could be something far worse that's wrong with it and I'll not get it repaired but I'm hoping all I need to do here is order up a replacement EEPROM get it soldered in and then the TV should in theory work again but uh, yeah that's going to involve ordering some parts from either Canada or the US although that won't really matter to you much because I'm going to edit this whole video in and you'll see the process from beginning to end but it's already arrived I'll show you the box in a moment and I'll get it opened up and we can take a look at the, the, the contents and see what we're dealing with so this is it here and it turned up very quickly it looks to have been packaged really well it's in this huge big box and it's been pretty much encased in brown packing tape which is always a good sign means that the seller's taken his time to properly wrap it up there's fragile stickers all over it as well so yeah so far so good what I'll do is I'll, I won't give you the uh, the hassle of watching me trying to get into this thing I'll just jump cut straight into what's actually inside this box. That's everything out of the box now and so far so good. I'm really impressed with the way the seller packaged this all up. He did an excellent job and not only did he have the screen wrapped in this screen protective wrap here, he also then had it wrapped up in a few layers of bubble wrap and everything was secured in place with those polystyrene blocks. So yeah, top marks to the seller for the, the packing job there. But so far everything looks great. The, the screen is in pretty much mint condition there's no problems with it at all there is a, a slight dent in one of the speaker grills here but that was mentioned in the the auction listing and I, i'm not bothered about that in the slightest and i can probably fix it anyway um, but yeah it came with the glasses the controller the controller the remote and a copy of gran turismo 5 here and what i thought at first was some scratches down the bottom here was actually the uh, the original protective film from the factory that's on the screen at the bottom so yeah overall and so far I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing these are the the glasses it came with and these are in excellent condition again they are 
Sony PlayStation branded. You can see it there as well in the back. And they even come in these little PlayStation branded baggies. And this one here doesn't look like it's even ever been used. It's still got the protective film on the, the lenses. So, very happy with that. Here's the, uh, the remote. Again, PlayStation branded. And the game. You've already seen that. So the next thing I'm going to do here is get this hooked up to the PlayStation and see if it actually works or not. I'm not expecting it to. It might come on briefly and then turn itself off, but what I'm going to do next is basically take the back off this, find out what version of mainboard is inside the, the unit, and then see about getting that replacement EEPROM ordered up. Uh, and then I'll go about replacing it and see if that makes a difference. But yeah, so far I'm very, very happy and I'm actually quite excited about seeing if I can get this thing to, to run again. So I'll quickly show you how the fault in this particular display presents itself. And as you can see, I've got my PlayStation 3 switched on, it's hooked up. And if I just hit the power button on the TV here, you see the, the red light comes on. If I hit it again, the blue bar will flash as if it's about to turn itself on. And then the green light comes on. And after a few moments, that should go out again and start blinking red, as you can see. And that goes along with the description of the, the EEPROM fault that affects all of these 3D displays. I've now removed the backing from the unit and we can get a closer look at what's going on inside. So right here you have a power board. In the middle there's a built-in subwoofer. And this right here is your main board. And this is where I think the problem lies with this particular unit. So what I can do now is I can take a note of the uh, version number, the revision number, uh, the type of mainboard that's in this unit and I can order up a replacement part. The part in question should be this one here. If I can zoom in without getting too blurry and shaky. is U4. It's a, an EEPROM and from what I've read that goes bad on pretty much all of these displays but replacing it with a, a good one it should bring it back to life. Hopefully it will. So what I'm going to do now is go onto eBay, order up the part. It'll probably take about two or three weeks to come in, but I suppose that doesn't really matter to you because I'm going to edit all this together. Uh, but that will be the next part, is fitting that new EEPROM to this board. Fast forward a little over a week and this package has just arrived at my doorstep. It's from Canada and it should contain the pre-flash replacement EEPROM that I ordered from eBay. I paid just over £7 for this, including the postage, which is about 10 or $12, US dollars, I think. And the next thing I'm going to do is take the back off that monitor again, because I partially reassembled it while I was waiting for this to arrive, desolder the faulty EEPROM, or what I suspect to be the faulty EEPROM, and put this one in its place and see if that makes any difference. That's the old EEPROM now removed. You can see where it used to sit on the board. That position marked U4. I just need to clean that up and then I'll solder in the new one. It's quite tricky to get that out. It was a little nerve-wracking because it's, it's surrounded by other components and it is really, really small. I've just put my finger there. You see, maybe we get an idea of scale. So not the easiest thing to desolder. Not the hardest, but uh, yeah, it was a bit of a challenge. So just need to solder in the new one and then we can fire it up and test it out. There's the new EEPROM soldered into place. So. Fingers crossed that's fixed the problem. I'll reassemble the, the monitor now and we can test it out. Time for the moment of truth. Did replacing that EEPROM make any difference at all to the issues that this monitor was having? I've got my PlayStation 3 hooked up and switched on over there. Everything's plugged into the back of the monitor and I'm not going to lie, I know whether or not this has been successful. So what do you think? Yes? No? Maybe? Let's find out. I'll hit the power button again. So we've got the blue bar at the bottom and as you can see it works perfectly and I've actually been playing this for the last 24 hours just to test it out and it's completely flawless there's no problems with it at all. The only thing that was wrong with it was in fact that dodgy EEPROM and replacing it has basically brought it back to life so I'm very very happy um, it looks great, and I'm probably going to be using this as my uh, main 
probably use it for my PC monitor and my main gaming display from now on. But for the price I paid for it, I paid £31 for the uh, the screen there with the uh, two pairs of 3D glasses, the game and the remote. £15 postage, so that's 46 And then you add on the extra £7 for the replacement EEPROM. So you're talking £53 all in, which you really cannot complain at that at all. I think I spent probably about 20 minutes doing the actual repair and the thing that took the most time would have been researching what was wrong with the TV. So that maybe took me about two hours of reading through various forums and posts online to, to actually work out what was wrong with it. But yeah, I kind of have to give a lot of credit to the people that uh, originally diagnosed the fault with these displays and the people that uh, uploaded the, the bin file to flash onto those EEPROMs so that people could actually repair their, their TVs. Without that, I, I'd probably never have got this thing up and running again. But there you go. I mean, it works. It works great. There's no issue with it at all. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, it has some special features that are unique to this display. Uh, or I suppose it's unique more to the console, but uh, yeah, it's a 3D 24 inch display, 1080p. They claim that it's 240 hertz uh, refresh rate, but I think it's actually that's more like a kind of marketing thing. It's really 120, and because it does this thing called simul view or simul view, uh, they kind of split it in two. But that is one of the main features of the, the set is it can do simul view, simul view, and I won't bother going into too much detail about it here, I'll actually show you a demonstration of it at the end of this video, I'll just tack it on to the end. But it basically allows two people to watch the same screen and see completely different things while they're wearing the, the glasses, so very very cool. Uh, but so far I'm really enjoying the, the screen. The 3D works with Blu-ray and it works with games, so I've actually picked up a couple of games here already to test it out, I've been playing a lot of House of the Dead Overkill, which is a, a great game, I've got that for the Wii, but um, when you combine it with this thing here, which is the the official PlayStation gun with the, the Move controller and everything on it, it it's great. Just playing a, a re an on-rail shooter in 3D is a, uh, a very interesting experience to, to say the least. And then there's this game here, which is Killzone 3. Again, works in 3D but when you add in this thing here you can actually control the whole game using the uh, this gun that uh, pointer thing can act, acts like a mouse and then you use the uh, this part here to control your direction and everything when you're wearing the 3D glasses and you're, you're playing the game holding the gun at the screen it, it totally immerses you in the, the experience which is very cool but anyway I'm starting to ramble on overall very happy with it. It's a, a beautiful looking display and I'm very happy that I got it up and working again. I'll leave a link or I'll leave some links in the description to the uh, the various forums that I worked out what was wrong with it on and where people had posted a lot of information about it. Just to give you a quick idea of how the simul view or simul view depending on how you want to pronounce it works, I've got the camera here pointed at the screen and I'm playing a bit of Killzone 3. Uh, this is the co-op mode. So what I've got here is I've got two pairs of 3D glasses and this is what you see on the screen here if you're not wearing the glasses at all you get kind of a, a strange uh, blurry double image sort of thing going on but if you hold up the, the glasses so say this is player one here you only see one image and just ignore the, the flickering that's just the, the camera picking that up but to the naked eye you don't see that so this is what player one sees and if I pull up the next pair of glasses this is what player 2 sees, which is a completely different image. So, player 1 is looking at a guy typing away on a computer, and player 2 is looking at a guy holding a gun. So you, you see completely different things, even though you're both looking at the, the same screen. It's a very, very cool feature. There you go. That's player 1. And player 2 there. Just to give you an idea of how that works. And there's a few different games that support this. I think there's a, a few racing games and uh, like first person shooters as well. It works really well for that because obviously you're not going to have people watching your screen to see where you are on the map or what you're up to. 
you can both be sitting there watching the same screen and seeing completely different images. And just to give you another quick look at the glasses here, these are active 3D glasses, so they're the LCD shutter type. They take batteries and you need to charge them, so they work a little differently to the ones that you maybe get at the cinema or the old school ones that are paper and have a, a red and a green lens in them. These you need to charge up and there's a little charging port on the top there. It charges over USB. There's another on-off power button there and then there's another switch on the inside for the, the battery on and off hidden in the, the leg and like I mentioned before these are all PlayStation branded so they're very nice quality you've got a nice big rubber piece on the nose there nice and comfortable to wear you can wear these over regular glasses as well if you want which is nice but there you go that's the, the actual 3D glasses for the, the TV so again thanks for watching and I'll catch you again soon